Red is known as a fighter because of his unique ways of overcoming the hardest challenges when it comes to Pokemon battles. But in the mainline games, is he actually a really good trainer? That's something we're going to be trying to find out as we attempt the Hardcore Nuzlocke in Pokemon Fire Red using only Red's Pokemon Adventure Team. For those who don't know what a Nuzlocke is, the rules are pretty simple. However, my rules have a little twist that could make my life a living hell. No items in battles. There's a level cap before each and every gym, and I gotta play the game in set mode. That's important. But before any of that, please subscribe. I'll sing a song if you subscribe. Th that's a lie. Don't believe what I just said there, please. And with all that being said, let's go right into the Nuzlocke. As I name myself Red, I name my rival Stinky because you know what? I'll be smelling you later instead. Wait, no wait. <laughs> God, you're such a kid. No, you. I woke up in my room after a long night of playing Fortnite. What you say to me, you little And I grabbed a free potion in my PC. What the hell? No RGB? Okay, I'm done with this game. I'm gonna go explore the road now. See ya. Man, the only time I decide to touch grass and this happens. You might see this on the screen and ask, So aquatic. Five attempts? What's up with that? Are you that bad at the game? Well, first of all, no. I pride myself in being pretty decent at the game, actually. But the majority of my attempts end where it starts. Yeah, either my RNG is pretty bad or I just suck at the game, which I highly doubt. Come on. I just couldn't kill this damn Charmander for some reason. Eventually, I was able to do it, but damn, that was pretty embarrassing. Anyways, we kept the dinosaur naming it Soar. After Professor Oak forces us to do his research for him, without pay, he gave us some balls. And officially, we start the challenge. And immediately, I failed the challenge by breaking my own rules and capturing Pokemon he didn't catch in a manga. Ooh, cheater. We got a cheater over here. Oops, my bad. I was so fixated on getting an item by filling the Pokedex that I failed to realize that I broke my own rules. Bruh. I wasn't gonna use those Pokemon anyways, but you know, rules are rules. So if there's any challenges you want to see me do, comment them in the comment section down below, and I'll do it, but just don't cancel me for it, okay? Please. Now back to the red challenge. In Viridian Forest, we caught a little rat. I named it Pika because red was very, very clever with names. I made it to Pewter City, and here I think it's a perfect time for me to tell you guys that I'm giving my Pokemon a certain type of drugs named Rare Candies. And I don't want to grind, and it's boring as f- And grinding is cringe, and cheating is base. And that I'll even sell them for money. Yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know. Brock was a piece of cake. All I needed to do was use Final Whip with Sword to secure the victory. I was even underleveled, so that was pretty pathetic. But whatever, we got the Boulder Badge. Maybe if Brock was shirtless, it would have helped him out a little bit because god damn. On my way to Cerulean City, Sword learned Poison Powder, Sleep Powder, and Leech Seed. And y'all know, I'm gonna be the scum of the earth with these moves. And I got no shame about it. Not at all. As we continue on with our journeys, I pick up some berries on the floor because these might be very helpful in the future. I don't know if they're safe or not. For all we know, they could be poisonous, but I'll take my chances. Hey kid. Want some happiness for only 500 Poke Dollars? Yes, please, because I've been very sad. I appreciate some happy- What? Are you serious? Hey, what the hell, man? <sighs> now I really hope those berries are poisonous. Ugh, whatever. I'll name you Gera. I head into Mount Moon and Zubat, Zubat, Zubat. Can you guys leave me alone? Holy crap. The only really positive thing about this cave is that we have options between two fossils. Here, I want you guys to predict what fossil I'll choose. I'll give you guys about 5 seconds. I decided to be evil, and if you guys predict the dome fossil, congrats! I'll give you guys onigiri. And before you guys say anything, that's all I could afford right now because I'm a broke-ass college student. So, <laughs> deal with it. Sword then evolves into Ivysaur, and finally we can get out of this horrendous cave. <sighs> oh my god! I made it to Cerulean City, but before facing Misty, I decided to face her minions and to explore the Naga Bridge so I don't surpass her level cap before facing Lieutenant Surge. That tends to happen when I play this game because the level cap in this game is doo-doo. You'll see what I mean by this in the future. Before getting on the bridge though, we gotta battle Stinky. And if you think he was hard before, ugh, this guy's even harder now. He leads with Pidgeotto, but expecting that, I led with Pika. Boom! Checkmate. Shh. It didn't take much to take it out, and a few Thundershocks burnt it into oblivion. That's an attack kinda did screw me over though, but a quick attack was able to take care of it. Easy. Next is his Rattata, and I don't think we'll be seeing this guy anytime soon. Oh my god, okay, that was a little rude. <laughs> Whoops. I swapped into Sor, who cheesed it so hard by putting it to sleep and sucking the life out of it. A few Vine Whips also did hit it, but that doesn't matter. Stinky did not like that, so he decided to send in his Charmander, but this time, 
We're prepared for it with a cheese. I put it to sleep and proceed to the life out of it with lead seed. It did take a bit because he hit me pretty hard with ember, but we were able to withstand it as he helplessly died to my seeds. Anyways, last is Abra, but all he knows is teleport, so that was a pretty easy KO. Thankfully, no one dies in this battle, because having less than 6 Pokemon in this challenge can be a huge pain in the ass, and I don't want to deal with it. We make it to Bill and we save him from his very stupid mistake, but what happened to the Clefairy? Bill? Bill? I better get answers for this. On my way back to Misty, I decided to take the rare candy pill and level up Gera until he evolves into Gyarados, finally making him useful. Intimidate is going to be a huge help in the future. And for those who don't know what it is, just know that he's going to be very helpful for Bruno and even Koga, since poison is actually physical in this game. Man, I forgot how broken these games are. Eater looking ass game. Anyways, we face Misty, but with the Pokemon we have right now, it goes as predicted. She sends out her Saryu first, so I send out Pika. I use Thunder Shock and it does a chunk of her health, while it just uses Harden. Misty drew hard. Are you serious, dude? Another one was able to take it out. She then sends out her Ace. Starmie. I decided to swap into Sword, thinking it's the best option for me. I seeded it to put it to sleep and vine whipped it until it's in the red. She uses her super potion, but it doesn't really matter since her Starmie is still asleep. So we kept spamming vine whip until we knocked it out, winning us a battle and getting us a cascade badge. In the manga, Missy did kind of try killing me, so consider this revenge. So far, Red's unique battling skills has been able to transfer over to the games pretty smoothly, but the biggest test we're gonna face so far is Lieutenant Surge. I don't really have anything super effective against electric types, and the only potentially useful Pokemon against him is Soar. So we're probably gonna cheese him. And yes, it's a valid strategy, I think. If you don't mind being the scum of the earth. Anyways, I continue being a weirdo by picking berries on the ground, and this continued on to the SSN because I started dumpster diving in the kitchen. Yes, nuzlocking is a serious occupation, my friends. I guess I'm more stinkier than stinky, huh? Damn. In my dumpster diving endeavors, I found a cherry berry, which is very helpful for the next gym, because this cures paralysis if a Pokemon has it. Very helpful. This is needed because we all know how much the AI loves giving us status conditions. Yeah, the AIs can be very stupid sometimes. And trust me, you'll see that. Beep boop looking ass. Anyways, I have another rival battle with Stinky, and he just starts trash talking me for some reason. No, just no. You know what, Stinky? I'm glad you killed Eradicate. You are a horrible person. Hey man, it's not my fault that his Eradicate doesn't have what it takes to be a good Pokemon. <gasps> what? What? I'm not wrong! After rubbing this old man's back, shh, everything is gonna be okay. Shh. He gave us the HM for cut. I can finally head to the gym and oh god, get me out of here. I hate this gym puzzle. Please, don't make me do it. After a very long time, I made it to Lieutenant Surge. And now, I kind of want to get some revenge for him putting me through that fucking torture. I started off with Sore. I see Senzo his Voltorb. One slow... And a few Razor Leaves was able to take it out. Next is his own Pikachu. But, you know, it's time for a favorite strategy. Easy! Now, it's time for us to face his final Pokemon, Raichu. Instead of putting him to sleep, I poisoned it. He used Double Team, which is really bad, but the poison guarantees us a way for him to die. His last ditch effort was to paralyze me, but because of the Cherry Berry, we're automatically healed. Eat your berries, my friends. It could save you and give you big muscles like mine. That's, that's Cap, by the way, so... <laughs> I swap into Pika to stall him to death, and I swap back into Sore immediately. He paralyzed me, but that doesn't matter as he finally dies to the poison that we gave it oh so long ago, getting us the Thunder Badge. Again, really scummy, but I don't care. My team sucks right now. Remember in the very, very beginning when I caught all those Pokemon that Red didn't actually catch in a manga? Well, the reason for that is because I can get items like Flash and a future item that I really want. And also, ain't no way I'm gonna be walking around this dark ass cave blind. Ain't no way, I want Flash. And if I'm cheating, so be it, I'll take it. But before any of that, I head back to Pewter City to get the old Amber. Future encounter stuff, you know how these things go. Nothing much of importance really happens in a rock tunnel besides his move tutor that teaches Rock Slide. I'll be meeting him soon because Rock Slide is pretty pog. Anyways, after making it out and going to uh oh, spooky scary town. Ooh ooh, spooky scary skeleton town. Woo! I head south to this random building. I head upstairs and talk to this chick and she gave me the TM for return. This is a physical move that increases in power if you and your Pokemon are best friends. Now, with that being said, we are best friends, right, Gera? Good. 
This should be very helpful when we face Erica. But as you guys can see, our team is pretty mid right now if we were to face her. But with return, we might actually have a shot. Thanks Flygon HG, I appreciate the strategy. In Route 8, we found a Lumberry on the ground. This heals any status condition on a Pokemon if it's held. And trust me, this berry will be our lord and savior for Erica. In Celadon City, we got this magical tea from this old lady. Weird, okay. And for some reason, the police in the Pokemon world doesn't want to do their jobs unless they're given tea. What? <laughs> How are you even more useless than the American police? This is a joke by the way, so don't take it seriously. I even bought a water stone because once again, this will be very helpful for a future encounter. I'm sure you guys know what it is, let's be honest. Mm. Ramen. Bro? <laughs> get, get this guy cancelled. In the Celadon City Gym, we were able to deal with some of the gym trainers with just Gera in return because the trainers were trash. And hopefully we can say the same about Erica. To prepare a little bit more, we EB train Gera on attack and speed, and just enough to edge it when I beat her first Pokemon. Because trust me, it's gonna happen. Giving Gera the Lumberry, I head into battle. She leads with Victory Bell. Our Intimidate lowers her attack, which really doesn't matter, as we hit her with a hard hitting return. It did about half, and she tries hitting me with a Stun Spores, but keep in mind, we got the Lumberry, so it immediately heals. And now she's helpless. Another return was able to knock it out. <laughs> She sends out her Tangela, but it's no match for the power of friendship, leaving us with her ace, Bioplume. This Pokemon is very scary because she could paralyze me enough where I might actually still lose the battle, which yeah, I don't want. Luckily, that scenario actually never happened because one returner was able to take it out on the spot, getting us a win and getting us a rainbow badge. Oh, that was, uh, I'm sorry, Erica. That was a... Uh... <laughs> A big brain move by just me. No other YouTuber thought of that strategy. Ah. I'm so good at this game. Now that the level cap increased a lot, we were given a little more leeway with the amount of trainers we can battle. The only problem is that it's level 43 and that there's two gyms with the same level cap. So yeah, this sucks and we gotta be careful. And this is why Gen 1 isn't my favorite generation. Oh god, I probably pissed off a bunch of people with that statement, but I stand by it. This generation is mid as fuck. This guy has a polyraph? What? Before me? Give me the polyraph. That's mine. I need it. Please, I need it. I need your coin purse so I can gamble. Thank you. Dude, why are you wearing your uniform in public? Are you stupid? And how the hell did you walk through the walls? Huh? We head into their base, and with Gera and Sor, their mindless grunts were easily taken care of. But there's one thing I don't like about this base though. These spinning floors. <laughs> Why do you have this in your base, Giovanni? Are you a masochist or something? You gotta be because goddamn. I made it to the big bad boss himself, but we destroyed him pretty flawlessly. He might be a little harder in the future, so it'll be better if we mention our battle in the future instead. How are you a leader of an entire evil organization and still have an onyx? Boy, you stupid as f- Also, thanks for the scope, loser. Oh Jesus Christ, time to gamble. This is gonna suck. Whoa, okay. Oh, this is gonna be bad. I'm already addicted. No! You made Are me you do- winning, son? I, You made me do this, I hope you know that. Actually, I won too. What the hell? What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Aquatic Sky sucks. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Aquatic Sky smells. Why is oh. it always me? Why is it always me? Call me Aloe. Stinks. Oh, I actually went something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, being misogynistic works. <laughs> no, that was mean. I'm sorry. That was very mean. What the hell? Nah. Dude, gambling is scary. <gasps> no, it's scary. <laughs> oh, I hate you so much. Can I just buy the coins? Can I just buy the coins? <laughs> I'm gonna go back in and reflect on my actions. Oh, okay, I'm in now. You have silly feet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, way. no. No way. No fucking way. Are you kidding? I'm gonna leave the call. This is a harass. This is just mean. I, I need to get drunk for this. <laughs> How much? You know what? Screw gambling. I'm just gonna buy it. Pokemon is pay to win confirmed. Don't gamble, kids. It's not worth it. Especially on a certain platform that I don't want to mention. I got the TM for Shadow Ball, but later we'll get the TM for Ice Beam. Before making it to Koga, we got a crap ton of stuff to do in order to face him. And trust me, it'll be worth it in the end. First, we head to the Pokemon Tower. We see Stinky without his Raticate. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god. And dealt with a lot of crackheads as we make it to the top. Be cursed with me! Yeah! <sighs> oh my god. I make it to the top and save an old man from Team Rocket. How did you get yourself in this situation? Seriously. And he gave us the Pokey Flute. Yes! Finally, I needed this! With this, we can get another encounter. And a great one at that. Snorlax. I'll name you Snore. Oh, Red. You got such a way with words. We'll be coming back to these Snorlax locations because there's a certain item that we can get that can definitely help us out throughout our journey. And I'm pretty sure you guys know what it's gonna be. We can only obtain it if we head to Route 11. So that's exactly where we went. In the building between Route 11 and Route 12, we see Professor Oak's aids. For 30 Pokemon in the Pokedex, we get the item finder. This reveals a hidden item on the floor. But Aquatic, why do you need something like this? Well, after capturing or defeating a Snorlax, this item will be able to detect a pair of leftovers, where they used to remain before we destroyed them. So we are given two leftovers for the team. The leftovers are pretty cool, as our items that gradually heals up your Pokemon's HP during a battle. And since we can't use any potions during battle, any free heals that we're able to get is really helpful in completing this Nuzlocke. I know right? Pretty big brain. I hope I don't make any mistakes because that'll be embarrassing. Nerd information aside, when we made it to Fuchsia City, there's a small pond where we can fish in. It didn't take long until we finally found a Poliwag. And it's about time we got Red's cannon starter. Jesus Christ, this late into the game, your name will be... Polly. Okay, okay, hold on. I get Soar and Pika, but Polly? Is that really the best you could think of, Red? Actually, never mind, never mind, because I'm actually insulting a 10-year-old. <laughs> Whoops, I'm not a bully, I swear. Little did I know, Polly's gonna be a huge carry to the team, especially for Koka. After avoiding some scary-ass Pokemon, I made it to the end of the Safari Zone and got the agent for Surf with Polly's name on it. I head to Saffron City and talk to Mr. Psychic. He gave us a team for Psychic, and this might be what we need for Koga. Holy crap, I said Psychic way too many times in that sentence. While I'm here, I might as well invade Self Co. I always get lost exploring this place, I swear. Okay, great. Now I'm losing my mind. That's what I need right now. Lovely. Polly evolved into Poliwhirl and thankfully we made it to the top. I saw my rival and went bye bye because I'm not ready to face him yet. Ain't no way dude. Instead, I went back to Koga to beat all the trainers standing in my way before we beat the big bad scary man himself. Before any of that though, I went to the graveyard to beat up some ghosts, Luigi Mansion style. We must EB train Polly in special attack. When we finish, he is now worthy of the Water Stone, making him evolve into Poliwrath. We've prepared so much for this Tyler Blevins wannabe, so let's see if it's enough to beat him. He leads with coughing, but one psychic from Polly took out America's air pollution. Anyways, he sends out Muck, but with some really, really good RNG despite the minimize, we were able to take it out with a few psychics. He tried poisoning me, but I have a Petra Berry to protect me from that. Next is coughing. Coffee. I'm not even gonna give you the spotlight. Last is his ace, Wheezing. Thankfully he doesn't have explosion, but come on. The smoke screen? I don't want the smoke, my guy, please. I keep f***ing missing and I couldn't finish him off with Polly. But after swapping into Gara, one return was able to knock him out, getting us a Marsh Badge. That was actually pretty easy and only the smoke screen was pretty annoying there. But come on, let's be honest. That's not a surprise at all. So, let's head back to Self Co. Actually save the people inside. Whoops. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Hey, Stinky. There you go. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> but, uh, but anyways. And defeat Giovanni again so we can get our gym badge. I usually have a hard time with Stinky and Self Co. But he actually ended up being pretty easy with the team we have right now. So let's talk about the insane champion fight with him instead. For now, you deserve the name Stinky. Same with Giovanni, a bunch of cheesing and a whole lot of winning. Yeah, to be fair, Giovanni was never really that hard, huh? Thank you, Giovanni. My brain is too massive. Now that the entirety of Saffron City is finally opened up, we can face Sabrina. Okay, pause. Where the f*** have you been the entire time? You know, a little help would have been nice, right? Useless. Honestly. <laughs> That's probably why you're evil in the manga. So what is the big brain strategy I'm gonna use for this gym? Well, did you guys know that some special moves are actually physical in this game? This is called the physical special split. For example, all ghost type moves in this game are actually physical no matter what. And that's why I got Chatterball and Tata to snore. Because Snorlax has some insane attack. And because Sabrina's Pokemon are physically weak. So all this information is way too much for me to explain. So if you guys are interested in this information, you guys can probably go to Cerebi. A lot of the information on there might be useful to you. And Lord knows that and Mobopedia has saved my run a few times. Before fighting Sabrina, I head back to talk to this random kid that can teach me Rock Slide. Remember this kid? It's just something to counter Venom off. But looking back, I probably didn't need it in the first place. 
face. And I keep saying this, but hopefully this is enough to face Sabrina. She leads with Kadabra as they send out Snore, equipped with a Prism Berry. She uses Calm Mind. Oh no, I'm so scared. But as expected, a Shadow Ball O-Code it. Ash's stat is next, but after a stab body slam, we absolutely annihilated it. It had absolutely no chance, bro. Easy. Benamoff is next, and after a puny little side wave, I hit it with a hard-hitting rock slide, Okoing it. And now it's time for her ace and her final Pokemon, Alakazam. His defense is really weak, so a body slam easily knocked it out. And Sabrina, this is what you get for not helping me out with Team Rocket, even though you work for them. Shoot, yeah, I kind of forgot about that information. <laughs> Whoops. So far, Red is doing pretty amazing. After an uneventful time in the snow, I head to Cinnabar Island to obtain our last Pokemon, an Aerodactyl, named Arrow. Huh? <sighs> Seriously, Red? Arrow? I head into this mansion and found the keys to the gym. Uh, why is this here in the first place? Man, this island is hella weird. Let's get out of here as fast as we can. So, Blaine, uh... Do we really need to talk about him? I'm pretty sure you guys know what's gonna happen to his team. Yup, Blaine was never really that hard either. Getting us a volcano badge. Yeah, I'm just very, I'm, I'm just very cracked at this game. You know, I don't think you understand. I head back to Vermilion City to face the final gym leader. I wonder who it could be. Oh, soy, Giovanni! No way, bro, soy. Maybe <laughs> I'm done. Knowing his track record throughout the game, though, yeah, I'm not worried at all. Yeah, there's honestly not much to say about this battle besides us getting a pretty clean sweep with Polly using Surf. Easiest battle of our lives, bruh. I hope, I really hope I don't regret saying that. I am really glad that I'm able to make Polyraph useful. He is such a cool Pokemon and deserves all the attention. But besides that, can we talk about how this grown-ass man disbanded his team because he kept losing to a 10-year-old with a gambling addiction? Bruh. I expected a lot better from you, but <laughs> wow, I sound like a dad. Before heading into the victory road and ultimately the Elite Four, I did a crap ton of EB training on everyone on my team. This is just so we can prepare for the final stretch of the game. And trust me, we're probably gonna need it. You serious? Oh my god, I can't use you. You gotta be f you gotta be kidding me. I'm gonna piss people off with this. <laughs> Shiny. We have another rival battle at Route 22, but let's talk about the harder, scarier battle when we reach a champion. I'm telling you, man, he was only really scary at the Nugget Bridge. This battle was pretty easy, so there's not much to say here. With all that out of the way, all that is left from us is to challenge the Elite Four and the champion of the Kanto region. I taught Gyarados Substitute and got some TMs at the game corner in order to make the best team we can for the challenges ahead. Do you guys think Red has what it takes to take on the Pokemon League? Well, let's find out as we battle the Elite Four. First is Lorelai, the Ice Hypey League for member. She leads with Dugong as I lead with Polly. I use Brick Break, which puts it in the red. As she just uses Safeguard, she wastes a Fulver Sword, and after two Brick Breaks, we were able to knock it out. Next is Slowbro. I swap into Snore, and he just uses Yawn for some reason. He put me to sleep, but that's fine because Slowbro has nothing on Snore. All I had to do was wait until he wakes up, and after a Body Slam, we finally took it out. Ploister's next, and she just uses spikes. While I hit it with a hard-hitting rock slide, she sets up the hill, but after another one, she goes down. Jinx is next, and very ugly. She tried stalling me out by putting Snore to sleep and attracting it, but we got very, very lucky. And we managed to hit it with a Shadow Ball immediately. Wow, we are really lucky here. Now it's time for her ace and her final Pokemon, Lapras. Thinking she will surf, I swap into Polly, which has Water Absorb. It'll do no damage to me, and after a few punches to the face, we're able to finish it off. A boxing match a lot better than KSI and Pineda. That's a joke, by the way, so don't take this seriously. Winning us a battle, and making this a first member? Down. We don't talk about Bruno, so I guess we just skip this battle. <laughs> Imagine just skipping a whole Elite Four. He starts off with an amazing, no, the best fighting type, 
Onyx, as the lead with Polly. Of course, one surf all coded. Next is Hitmonchan, or the Mani Pacquiao wannabe, I guess. I use Psychic, which puts it in the red, and he hits me with a very hard Sky Uppercut. After spamming it a bit, we took it out. But damn, that's a lot of HP. He then sends out his Hitmonlee, and not wanting to risk a KO, I swap into Soar. Of course, I use Leech Seed so I could seal its HP. I use Growth to increase my special attack, and a Giga Drain alongside the Leech Seed was able to knock it out. Now, it's time for his ace and his final Pokemon, Machamp. Knowing he has guts, I didn't use Poison Powder. Instead, I used Leech Seeds and a few Giga Drains was able to knock it out. I was a little scared, but we came out on harms. But damn, that was pretty rough. Third is the Ghost Hyper League from Ember. Agatha. She might as well be a Poison member, but that's fine, I guess. She starts off with Gengar as I send in Snore. She uses Double Team immediately, but luck was on her side, and I hit it with a hard-hitting Shadow Ball, Okoing it. Oh my god, already with the Double Team strats, huh? She then sends out her Golbat. She fucking confuses me, but thankfully after one turn, we snapped out of it and hit it with a hard-hitting Rock Slide. She uses a Poison and a Confuse Ray, which is really annoying, but luckily, a few Body Slams was able to take it out. My god, really annoying. Next is her Arbuck, but after getting the Intimidate on me, I swap into Polly, and of course, we get poisoned with a sludge bomb. Why am I not surprised? I swap into Sword, which is probably a bad idea, seeded it a bit, and finally swap into Arrow. It's your time to shine, dude. Finally! An Earthquake took it out. That was really annoying. <laughs> Jesus. She sends in Hunter. Seriously? But an Area Ace took it out. Easy clap. It's time for her Ace and her final Pokemon. Gengar. Again, I guess. I swap into Snore, and after a few Shadow Balls, we were able to finish off this battle. God, finally. I was so over her, she's so annoying. Now, it's time for the last Elite Four member. Lance, the Flying Master. He starts up with Gyarados as I send in Pika. Of course, one Thunderbolt annihilated it. Pretty easy so far. He then goes into Dragonair. Not knowing what to do, I swap into Sword to set up the Seeds. And thank God he just uses Safeguard. I don't know what to do in this situation. With the Seeds up, I swap into Gero with the Leftovers. It's what I would say if I actually gave it to him, but of course, I'm a dumbass and I forgot. Ah, oh, that's great. <sighs> Whatever, it's fine. Instead, I would just set up a substitute and spam a bunch of dragon dances. I would alternate between the two until I'm plus five. I got very lucky, and luckily, the AI is very stupid, because this was enough to sweep his entire team by spamming returns. Oh my god, my heart was actually beating during this moment. Winning as a battle, and making this the last member, down a little cheap but i i would take i would do whatever it takes man F this that was fucking insane jesus christ all we need to do now is face a champion of the kanto region stinky so far red has been doing phenomenal so i don't expect any less from him during this battle will my opinion of red change after the battle well we'll have to face him to see but i'm planning to become champion after this battle so i doubt it he starts off with Pidgeot as I send in Pika. One Thunderbolt puts him in a red, and after an Aerial Ace, he uses a Full Restore. That doesn't really matter because after spamming Thunderbolt, he goes down. Easily. He goes into Rhydon D's nuts. Ha. So to respond, I swap into Soar. After one Giga Drain, that Rhydon was down. Next is Alakazam. I switch into Snore while he sets up to Reflect, preventing me from getting the one-hit KO. Pretty annoying, but whatever. But after a Body Slam, he goes down. Before that, though, he sets up a Future Sight. Hopefully, this doesn't bite me in the ass. He then sends an Executor. Of course, as soon as he goes in, he hits me with a Giga Drain crit. Come on, dude. That's not fair. And of course, the Future Sight takes effect and leaves me in the yellow. Oh my god, this is bad. I wanted to rest, but this you used sleep powder. So my Chesco Berry was taken away from me. I cannot believe he just did that. This guy, is, he's a genius. He's a fucking genius. I can't believe he just did that. I really need some insane luck here, because this is looking pretty bad. He starts spamming Egg Bomb, putting me in a yellow once again. But finally, we woke up, and after a few Shadow Balls, we took it out. God, this was so annoying. He then sends in Gyarados. Because we're really low, I decided to sack up Snore. I did a lot of damage with Rock Slide, and he finally took me out with Hydro Pump. This gave me the opportunity to swap into Pika. And with that, Thunderbolt zapped it out of the field. Thank you so much, Snorlax. You were amazing. Seriously. And now, it's time for his ace and his final Pokemon, who happens to be his starter, Charizard. I decided to sack off Pika because I don't want to take my chances with my other Pokemon. A Thunderbolt makes him really, really low. Aw, oh, man. Ah, oh, come on. Pikachu's dead. <laughs> and he hits me with a hard-hitting Fire Blast. Wow. <laughs> yep, you're dead. I go into Arrow, and with one Ancient Power, we knocked out his last Pokemon, and finally completed the Nuzlocke. Oh, I got the Omni Boost too to add into the injury. Easy! That's another Nuzlocke down. Wow. So... 
Can I beat Pokemon Fire Red using only Red's manga team? Yes! Yes I can! And that was really fun. So if you guys really want to see even more manga Nuzlocke just like this, be sure to like the video. It'll tell me that y'all really enjoyed, and it'll encourage me to do even more Nuzlocke just like this. And if you guys really like the Pokemon anime, I recommend you to watch this video here. It's an Ash Nuzlocke that you guys might actually like. But with that said, I'll see you guys there. Bye bye